My name is Mike Stom, and I'm the canola breeder at Kansas State University. And this morning we're standing in a canola field. This is the winter canola breeding nursery that I coordinate here. Winter canola is an alternative crop for Kansas farmers. We're interested in winter canola because it helps wheat farmers improve both wheat yield and wheat quality. Winter canola is a high value oil seed. The oil that canola produces is approximately 40%, which is about twice as much as what the soybean produces. Canola oil is a very healthy oil for consumers here in the United States as well as around the world. We're encouraging farmers to grow winter canola because of its rotational benefits with wheat as well as produce a healthy cooking oil for consumers. We import approximately 80% of the canola oil that we consume in the United States, so it makes sense for farmers in the southern Great Plains to grow more winter canola. As I mentioned, winter canola is an oil seed. It is a broadleaf crop, and that makes it an excellent fit for rotation with winter wheat. We can use a class of herbicides on winter canola that we can't use in wheat to help control grassy weed species as well as other broadleaf weeds. There are both conventional and Roundup Ready winter canola available for growers here in Kansas. As you can see, we're in the flowering stage of canola's growth and development. Approximately 70 to 80 percent of the flowers have, have gone ahead and are now producing pods, as you can see here on this raceme. This is really what we want to see. Of course, the flowering stage is, is the most beautiful stage of canola growth and development, but what we're really interested in is seed development and oil content of the seed. So as you can see here, canola is an indeterminate crop. There are several branch, branching areas on the plant, uh, each producing pods and seeds. You can see that there are still some buds at the top of the plant that are opening into flowers and then producing these long skinny pods. And each one of these pods will have approximately 20 to 40 seeds within it. And the seeds are very small. They're approximately two millimeters in diameter but remember that the seed is approximately 40% oil. So very high oil producing crop. Canola is planted in the fall approximately the same time as winter wheat, maybe a little bit earlier than what we, we plant winter wheat in this part of Kansas. And when canola is planted, it will emerge and produce a rosette in the fall. And that rosette will go ahead and overwinter. And most of that above ground forage will die back except for the main crown and that crown will stay green throughout the winter. And then as temperatures warm in the spring, the crop will bolt, which is when it shoots up its stem. And then eventually you'll see these flower buds at the top of the stem. And as the crop gains height, the flowers will start to open. You'll start to produce pods and the process goes from there. One of the reasons why we're encouraging farmers to grow winter canola is that the same equipment that can be used for wheat production can be used for winter canola, even though it is such a small seed. Farmers can plant and harvest winter canola with the same drills and, and combines that they use to plant and harvest winter wheat. Canola is a crop that we don't want to grow continuously. We want to grow it in rotation, and it makes an excellent rotational crop with winter wheat because of the different classes of herbicides that we can use in winter canola to control weeds that are often troublesome in winter wheat. Canola is a broadleaf, wheat is a grass, and so when you grow those two crops uh, in combination together, we see a real benefit to that whole system. Canola has a taproot, and that taproot can mine deeply for water and nutrients that are, are buried in the soil that a wheat root system often can't get to. And canola, we believe, has the ability to bring those nutrients and water up closer to the surface. And therefore, uh, subsequent crops that are planted after canola can benefit from those, those nutrients that are brought closer to the soil surface. In these two plots that I'm standing in front of, you can see a difference in maturity. And that's one of the traits that we're interested in developing in our, our varieties. We want a range of maturities for growers so that they can spread out their risk. Have some varieties that are early that will come out before wheat harvest and others that may come, in, come out about the middle of wheat harvest. And you can see in this plot to the right of me, you can see more pods develop than what you can see 
here in the plot to the left of me, uh, that's an indication of maturity. This, this variety here on the right flowered earlier, producing more pods here than what the variety is on the left. Canola is a crop that can be grown in different row spacings, anywhere from seven and a half to 15 to 30 inches. The reason why farmers would grow winter canola in 30 inches is to gain the benefits of using a planter to seed it. And those benefits are the ability to move residue out of the seed row, as well as better control of planting depth, as well as metering of seed. There are a number of farmers now that are growing winter canola on 30 inch rows in Kansas. They're treating it more as a row crop than they are a crop that we would solid seed like, like winter wheat. Seeding canola on 30 inches gives farmers another, a number of other options as well. Things like using strip tillage to apply nitrogen deeply into the soil. That works really well for moving residue out of the seed row, which is a benefit to winter canola survival. Another trait that we are interested in with our winter canola breeding program is plant height. And as you can see, winter canola comes in a wide range of plant heights. The reason why we look at plant height as a trait is because producers who grow taller varieties often use swathing. And when you swath, you want to have residue to lay the windrow in to help protect it from the wind. Producers who use direct cutting like shorter varieties because shorter varieties tend to not blow in the wind as much as what some of the taller varieties do at maturity. When canola blows in the wind, it can often shatter out, and that's one of the main concerns with, with growers growing it in this state. We often have strong winds, and sometimes that can lead to shattering problems at harvest. With winter canola being a new crop here in Kansas, there are new insects that we have to be aware of. And one of those insects is the cabbage aphid. And this aphid comes in at this time of the growing season at flowering into pod de development. And as you can see here, these aphids are attacking the top of the main raceme of this canola plant. And when they grow in numbers here, they'll abort these pods that are, or these buds that are opening and trying to produce a pod. That can be very damaging to the canola plant if there are too many racemes that are infected with the cabbage aphid. So farmers will often spray this time of year to control the cabbage aphid. So in a few weeks, we will be harvesting canola here in Kansas. And with an abundant harvest, we'll hopefully see more yellow flowers across the state. This is an alternative crop that has a very high value. And we feel that wheat growers who incorporate it into their cropping systems will really benefit with this crop in rotation with winter wheat.